I started to notice things in the media about mental illness and that it was just so negative. It was really showing graphic and dramatic things and which just made my mental health spiral. I think if you're in that mindset and you're struggling, for me, I would then look at ways to make myself feel even worse. And so it's just really important for me to try and change that. Like if I'm going to create my own work, then I want to create about something that's really important to me. And I think you have to realize that for most instances, like it's, it's so important to take your time and take care of your mental health first. You don't have to do it today. Like encourage yourself and, and really put yourself forward. And if you want to do something, then yeah, encourage yourself to do it, but make sure it's at the right time for you. In 2021, you got approached by a very well-known publication and they invited you to be part of the Forbes 30 under 30 list. Tell me about how that contact happened. Ella, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. I was thinking when I was looking at your story, because when I research the stories of my podcast guests and learn more about their journey, I always pay close attention to the parts of their stories that in some way create some kind of like an emotional reaction. And whether it's like, I'm really impressed or I'm motivated or I'm just emotionally triggered. <laughs> and I try and think, well, you know, what are the messages there? And is there anything there that other people can learn from? The thing that kind of kept coming up when it came to your story was it seemed to me like you had this real confidence to take your career into your own hands, particularly in an industry that's notoriously known for being really difficult to get your foot through the door. For those people who don't know much about you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, so I'm Ella Greenwood. I'm a filmmaker and the founder of Broken Flames Productions, which focuses on mental health-based projects. And I'm an ambassador for STEM4, which is a leading teenage mental health charity. You started Broken Flames Productions when you were 18 years old. This is a time when it's completely understandable for people to want to look for guidance about their career, but you decided to start your own production company. So tell us about where the idea came from and how you started Broken Flames Productions. So I'd always loved films and um, going to the cinema and loved the idea of kind of Hollywood and the, yeah, the entertainment industry um, and I when I was younger I wanted to act so I had an agent from a young age and was auditioning and everything um, and did that throughout most of my teenage years um, but at the same time you know went to school and was studying and everything so it was kind of that was obviously the main focus and then I, I knew what I wanted to do but it it wasn't a full-time job or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I was 18 and I finished my A-levels, it was that summer where I I just, I mean, I knew that I still wanted to act and be in the industry, but then it just felt like I had so much more time on my hands. I mean, I was working as well, but I wasn't, I was working in hospitality, like it wasn't what I was wanting to do. So yeah. I just thought like, how can I make myself progress? Like where I'm getting these auditions and I'm not getting yeses and I can't, I can try my best and I can always do everything in that sense, but at the end of the day, I can't control their decisions. So that's when I thought about creating um, my own work and creating a short film. And again, I mean, I didn't know what I was gonna do with it. I thought I would just act in it and I would try and find someone else to write and someone else to direct. But the more I got into it, the more I was just like, well, maybe I'll try writing and then <laughs> maybe I'll try directing and it, and it went from there. Those early experiences where you were acting, what were some of those lessons that you learned that helped you when you set your own company up? So I had my first agent, my first main agent from when I was around 13 and I mean, never did anything huge or anything like that, but did get experience on different sets. And there were so many things that I noticed. I mean, how it was pred predominantly males and how it was predominantly quite wealthy people in the industry um, and how it was so fast paced and stressful. And that was something that I was like, well, those are negative things. Like if I'm gonna do something my way, I wanna do it the way that I want to. And so 
it was all, you know, with our first short, it was um, predominantly female crew members, which is the way it's carried on ever since. Um, I'm not from a wealthy family in that sense. Um, so it was also important for me to try and create more opportunities for people who have no clue how to get into the industry or feel like it's really inaccessible. That was something that was really important to me. Um, and yeah, like just, I'd learned certain things like that, which, I then carried on to the company um, and just how, I guess, how a set works. But all in all, I was still so clueless when it came to <laughs> making my first short because I didn't know that I wanted to be behind the camera when I was on set. So I was trying to take it all in as much as possible, but it wasn't like I was paying particular attention to um, everything that went on in making a film. It was more just the acting side. So yeah, I was, I had a lot to learn when I was thinking about doing my first short. That's the film Faulty Roots, right? Where you, yes. you played Lola. You also directing it as well. Like, how how were you able to sort of balance all those tasks on your on your first short film? Yeah, so I was. I mean, I'd set things up beforehand, and it's funny actually. I got two of my best friends, um, Lorna and Abby, to be kind of like associate directors. And again, like they're they're not in the industry now. They've never even acted or anything like that. They are just my two friends are and I needed people so they would help with the yelling action and, and kind of being my eyes like while I'm on screen but then yeah I would go back to seeing it after um I mean I would not do that again I don't actually act anymore I'm really focused on behind the scenes but I mean I made it work and I was just kind of doing everything at that point I guess it's that classic thing as well that when you're starting out with anything you're like the person doing the marketing you're the person doing operations and then maybe you're even the person trying to attempt to do the legal so you're kind of doing it all in mm -hmm. the beginning but little did you know that time that obviously Faulty Roots became quite successful and it got recognized it entered into a lot of BAFTA qualifying festivals as well and now being made into a feature. So what has that process been like getting it to that stage? It's been a really, really great one. I mean, I didn't expect anything when doing the short and I think that's the best way to go about it. If you have too high expectations, then you are just gonna get disappointed. And I think that also gave me such a confidence to just send it out to festivals, send it out to reviewers um, and just, yeah, really believe in the project, but also be so open to whatever happens with yeah. it. And it's been a really wonderful process getting to develop the story further and, and be with the characters more. And, you know, you just have the space to really go with these characters on, on a bigger journey and see more of the ups and downs, which I think is so important when talking about mental health, because there are so many ups and downs. It's never a constant, um, kind of a constant thing. So... Yeah, that's been really wonderful. I would like to go a little bit back to when you started the company and understand a little bit more about what your mindset and confidence was like at that time. Because as you were saying, you've had like a lot to learn. And it is a time, especially in the film industry, where, it, you know, starting your own production company and making films, it's not like you're at home and, and, you know, starting a business from your bedroom. There is so much to take into consideration. So where do you feel you got the confidence to think, I'm I'm going to take this into my own hands and... I'm going to create my own films. I honestly don't know. Like it is just, it is funny because I had no clue what exactly a produ production company did. I didn't know about making films. I didn't know how to run a business or, or anything like that. I just, I think it came from more of a place of me just wanting to be productive and to just try I do think something that's fortunate is that I will just try anything. I, I don't often say no to anything if I haven't tried it. Like I I just love to do that. I love to try new things and just to see what happens and to be quite practical in that sense. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's where the confidence came from. It's just like, well, I'm, I'm just gonna try it and see and I think it's almost the it's almost kind of faking it till you make it. Like if you think you're you're good, you know, you're just say you're gonna make a film, say you're gonna start a production company, um, and have that confidence that this is gonna be a good film, we're gonna do it professionally, like we wanna um work on a lot more projects as we go and then that will all just fall into place. I mean you can ask questions and I'm not saying say that you're this amazing production company that's done loads if you haven't, but just yeah, have the confidence that 
whatever you're doing, you're going to do it to the best of your abilities. Were there any challenges in those early stages? There are so many challenges and there still are. I think it's just a constant thing with anything that you take into your hands or any career, um, but especially with something creative, there's always the rejections and the no's, um, which is hard. I mean, for me, like it took, it took a while for me to write the script and then I just wrote it. I think that was when I was kind of procrastinating a bit. Um, and then when looking to kind of get crew, I didn't, I didn't know how to go about that. And I just tried my best. Um, but I think, I think overall, because I've always loved the idea of films and acting and everything like that's been what I've wanted to do from such an early age, I didn't ever think, oh, well, it wouldn't be worth getting over these hurdles yeah. because there's nothing else that I, I've, ever kind of loved that much so it is more well you're just gonna have to kind of keep going because like what else are you gonna do in 2021 you got approached by a very well-known publication and they invited you to be part of the forbes 30 under 30 list what was that experience like for you and tell me about how that initial contact happened that was yeah just such a wonderful experience so i think it must have been about early 2021 and I just got an email from a reporter at Forbes saying that she'd seen a lot about my work about the mental health aspect and that she'd like to put me forward and kind of nominate me in that sense because the way it normally works is other people who have previously been on the list will nominate you um but yeah she was so kind and, and just said that she loved my work and wanted to put me forward um so then I just um had to send over lots of details and information about what I've done, what I'm currently doing and what I hope to do. Um, and then they said, you know, then that would be reviewed and then it would be um, sent to the judges and then um, it would be announced here. Oh, wow. And there was no indication at all. A couple of months later, you know, you don't hear back either way. So I remember it was, it was just before I did one of my film shoots, actually. So that was just such an amazing time in my life. Um, and it was, I think it was like 7am and I'd seen on Twitter that the list had been shared and I was like, oh, I'm just not going to be on there. Like, I don't know if I want to look because I'll be quite sad. Um, and then I went on and I was just scrolling and I saw all the other people and then I scrolled and saw my face and it was just, it was, yeah, I think one of the best feelings I immediately like had to um talk to my mum because I was like can you check like I think I'm hallucinating <laughs> this. like this is just this is a prank it must be like, yeah I really did think that that's really interesting as well because I didn't realize that they first shortlist you and then it goes to judges and then they announce it in that way so when you got on that, that initial phone call did you know how many kind of rounds there was going to be before they announced it not really I mean I knew that it would be reviewed by kind of the Forbes team and then um and then there would be a panel of judges, but I had no clue at that point, like kind of the time frame we were talking or how many people would see it or um, yeah, like when it would be announced. So it was, I mean, I think you're always told like from acting at a young age and then with anything like this, like once you do something to just kind of let it go, like if you go to an audition, just forget about it as soon as you walk out of the room because there's a constant, oh, am I gonna get it? Like, am I gonna hear back? And you often never do um, as an actor, so. I think it's one of those things just I've done it um whatever happens happens there's nothing you can do now so just kind of forget about it in that sense but it's so hard not to yeah I mean, it's yeah it's so hard to try and forget something like that and what are the kind of things that have come from that experience a lot of opportunities have come from that uh which has been great and particularly I'd also say about within the industry but also a main focus for me in the company is around mental health and I love speaking about mental health whenever I can and, and raising awareness and it's really helped in that sense too some of the opportunities that I've got for panels um, and, and podcasts and things like that to then talk about mental health has has been really wonderful. That's something you are heavily involved with in your company but also off screen as well. Why is it important for you to be really involved with raising awareness around mental health? So I started struggling with my mental health when I was around 13 um, and I had no clue what what was going on. I'd never, you know, no one had ever really spoken about mental health and mental illness and definitely not to 
to 13 year olds and so I just had no clue what I was going through and it took me a while to realize that something was wrong and that I was struggling and then I didn't know what to do about that. I didn't know what would help because it just seems like well it's just me like what you know what am I going to do I'm broken anything I can't go to the hospital in that sense that was just kind of the mindset that I had and then I, I struggled for for most of my teenage years and eventually got help you know spoke to people and and then I saw I started to notice things in the media about mental illness and that it was just so negative it was I'm um, really criminalizing people, you know, they did this because of a mental illness and um, really showing graphic and dramatic things and which just made my mental health spiral. I think if you're in that mindset and you're struggling, for me, I would then look at ways to make myself feel even worse. And there are ways, like there's so much bad content out there um, that can have a really negative impact. And that made my struggles with mental health so much worse and I knew that that was a bad thing. And so it's just really important for me to try and change that. Like if I'm going to create my own work, then I want to create about something that's really important to me. And it's almost like I owe it to that the past me and anyone else that's going through that to just try and say, look, this is what life can be if you, if you just keep going, if you take it step by step and if you do all these different things that I learned helped and, and things that I learned that helped me like I you know if I can help one person even slightly then that's that's such an incredible thing and that makes it all worth it. Anybody who watches your short 40 Roots they can really see how much you've covered mental health in that film. How did you prepare for putting that on screen while also sort of dealing with your own mental health as well? Yeah I think it's just so important for me to feel like what I'm showing is truthful and authentic um and so with false roots like it's it's not about my story like I'm not the main character but I'll use so many things that either people have said to me that have had an impact or things that I thought or said or, or wanted to say and yeah. and know that that comes from a place of truth because it's happened to me um and I think that's always something that's really important then also to to be careful on what would have affected me negatively like I don't want to um, show anything that would have made me spiral in a bad way in that sense so I think that's always at the forefront of my mind whenever doing these and I mean I've loved it like I love getting to talk about mental health and, and the things that I've experienced I think it's been really helpful to me it's things that I've never kind of processed properly perhaps um, so yeah it's been a really wonderful experience. And do you think there is something as well in, in putting this topic in an art form that is also therapeutic. Yeah, definitely, because it's quite nice sometimes, you know, I think back at times when I was really struggling and it's like, oh, I, I you know, I should have just done this or I should have just got on with it a bit more and it's always, you're always gonna be so much more negative to yourself than you would someone else. So when you're putting these different characters in this situations that you, you know, maybe you've experienced or, or similar situations to, to what I've lived. It's like, it's so much easier to just look at them and, and kind of care for them in that sense yeah. and say, well, no, like they need to, they need to look after themselves here. They need to take the time. Like it's, it's so much easier for me to, um, kind of be more kind to the characters than it, it is to myself. And I think that's a, yeah, that's an interesting thing. That, that's such a, a classic, isn't it, as well? It's a similar thing when people say, the advice you give to your friend is always kinder than the advice yeah. you give to yourself. What has been the response and the feedback from covering these types of topics in your films? There's been such lovely feedback, um, such positive feedback about the representation of mental health and also people who've said, you know, they've been slightly clueless about what mental illness is and and what it means to struggle with your mental health and that it's really opened their eyes and helped better their understanding and that's incredible too. And yeah. and yeah, just people saying that they've felt seen by these films and by these characters, which is all you could ever hope for. Do you think film has a really strong impact in helping people when it comes to either dealing with their own mental health or raising awareness so they can help others? family members who are going through something like that yeah definitely film is such an incredible way to raise awareness of, of many different things and it's always I mean our aim is to do it in a way that people don't realize that they're being taught something or that yeah. they're you know because if you were to just say well you're gonna watch a film about what 
depression is a lot of people maybe wouldn't be interested or wouldn't want to watch it but if you kind of tailor it differently you're watching a film about characters and and there's light-hearted moments and there's humor but you are still taking in what depression is like it's so much more it's just an easier way for people to to watch and to understand when it comes to giving advice to others let's say there's somebody out there who's experiencing issues around their own mental health but they are trying to be productive, whether it's just getting through their day or whether it's to start something that they are really passionate about. Do you have any advice for them based on your own experiences? I think you have to realise that for most instances, like it's it's so important to take your time and um, take care of your mental health first. If you want to start a production company, like you can do that. You don't have to do it today. Um, that there is time. It's so much better for you to just, if you are struggling, to take the time to, to process that and, and to rest rather than trying to do all of this stuff when you're not at your best. From my experience, I'll get so much more done if I've let myself rest rather than trying to do it in small stages when I'm struggling. Just be patient with yourself, I think, and not feel like you're in such a rush to to accomplish anything or um, that it's now or never. Like encourage yourself and and really put yourself forward and if you want to do something then yeah encourage yourself to do it but make sure it's at the right time for you. Yeah I'd like to talk a little bit about navigating your career in an industry where there's not really a set path. What has been your experiences in trying to strategize and plan your career? I mean it's I don't know if I've ever planned anything in that sense it is just seeing what opportunities arise and what comes from each thing that you do and and then you know maybe getting inspiration and like okay I really want to try this now and I really want to do that and I think it is so important to yet understand that for example um the film industry there's there's no set route that you can take and yeah but comparison is such a big thing but that's just there is no need to compare because everyone has a very different journey and to just it's important to focus on your own you know even in the sense of acting like some people don't get really successful till they're like 40 some people are successful when they're a child like it's everyone's journey is so unique and um yeah it's just remembering that it is one of those industries where there's no set route um and you maybe you want to act like I did at the start and then you fall into something else and that's okay. It's, I think it's really okay to just see where it goes and to follow where your passion leads you. I totally agree. And even let's say if you're not in the film industry, comparison is, is such a big thing across the board. And I, I find that if you start to compare yourself, you lose your voice because you're so focused on what other people are doing. Have you ever struggled with that or have felt that you've needed to rein yourself in and think, okay, no, I've got to focus on myself and not others. Yeah, I struggle with it all the time. Um, for me, tools like Instagram are amazing. Like I love I love sharing things on Instagram and I love seeing what other people are up to, but I can see so suddenly sometimes the impact that it has where I see, oh my gosh, this person's, you know, doing this amazing project, like they're shooting here, they're, they're doing this, and it, it makes me feel so bad about myself. And it's so instant like I'll see the picture and like my mood's just dropped and I'm like oh my gosh it's so nice for me to take a break like I find it yeah so much better for my mental health if I'm kind of separated from that and then to just remind myself as long as I'm happy with what I'm doing and I'm you know I love the work that I'm doing and what I'm putting out there then that's the most important thing and that yeah everyone has a different journey it's yeah but God, it is so hard comparing yourself. When it comes to navigating opportunities, do you have an idea about the things that you say yes to and the things that you say no to? How do you then make those decisions? It's hard. I mean, I'm learning a lot more because I've I haven't I've been doing it for a couple of years. Um, and I've been fortunate that things have progressed quite quickly. But especially at the start, it's just yes, like oh my gosh, this person's reaching out to me. Yes, I want to work with them. Like yeah. yes. I want to try everything but now it's just so much more if I say yes this project that I'm currently working on is going to suffer Um, and so it's thinking about am I going to be able to give all of myself to this project am I going to be able to do it well and give it 100% because I you know everything that you do deserves 100% um, of your energy and passion and um, I think that's come into it a lot more even if it is a project that I've 
loved or really wanting to get involved when it just wouldn't be fair to to anyone involved if you know we're not fully there and fully present so yeah it's trying to think about that do you ever find yourself being pushed for time and struggling to balance yeah all the time I don't think there's ever been a day where I've felt like I've had enough hours <laughs> Um, and me and, um, my producing partner may always have this thing where we're like the to-do list, like it is just, it has been ongoing. It has been an ever ongoing to-do list. It's just more and more things get added and yeah, I do find it really difficult and it's so important for me, you know, to then set this hour aside, like I need to exercise right now yeah. or, you know, I need to take a break. I need to get the right amount of sleep and I need to see friends. I need to see family. Um, you need to like enjoy your life as well, basically. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's hard because I, I enjoy my work. So it's like, well, I don't want to say, like when I'm working, I'm having fun too, which sounds really lame, but um, it is hard and there are so many different things that I want to do and I, I love you know working with charities and working on mental health panels and discussions and um various different organizations that I've worked with now so it's yeah it's just trying to um take it step by step and some days I feel like I've done nothing at all but it's just then okay even if you've sent one email that's still doing something everything counts I want to ask a question about pushing things forward in your industry it's like pushing your films forward to get to the production stage or pushing them forward to get contacts and the right talent and the right producing partners. You mentioned Maya earlier. Is that a skill or is that something you've had to learn? I have always been like that. I've always, I'm quite an impatient person <laughs> and I just want to do things and, and get going and that's typically how I am. So it's been kind of more for me to to also remember to, to be patient with things and, and not to rush anything because it's so important like finding the right people and yeah. that just it's so worth if you spend more time doing that because it will have such an impact I mean the people that you put around you really change everything like I couldn't I wouldn't be sitting here and I couldn't have done the things that I've done without the support of amazing people around me I think I've luckily always been able to do that and to really push and just keep going and try new things and put myself out there but it's also about choosing the right people rather than just whoever's first and do you have a criteria in your mind about when you're looking for the right person or is it more of a gut instinct it's more of a gut instinct um yeah I mean so May is the person that I work most closely with now and we've done so much together and it's been a wonderful experience working with her um and when she started out she didn't have any experience with producing at all um and I could have gone with someone who had experience in producing but she we just spoke and she just seemed like a the most wonderful person and hardworking and passionate and wanting to know more and wanting to be involved and it was just I just wanted to to work with her and, and that served me me well that gut instinct because she, now she's incredible she's such an incredible producer she picked it all up so well but overall she's just a kind person um and that's that's one of the most important things that you could look for you've also given back as well to the filmmaking community because you've worked quite a lot in helping new filmmakers get funding which is such a big topic we can do a whole podcast on that but can you share with us some of your personal experiences with funding films and then why you got into wanting to help others yeah so with my first ever short that was completely crowdfunded um and again I didn't know what I was doing it was at that point when I was had the crowdfunding page and, and started it, like it was just me I was the only member of this whole <laughs> film crew and it was I mean it's difficult I didn't know what I was doing but I do think whatever you're doing I mean it's important to try new things but there'll always be a basis of something to go on you know I could see how other people had raised funds and I could see their pages and what I needed to do and I just reached out like I sent it to so many people and I was just really honest and said like it it is just me but I have big plans like and, and this is why I'm doing the film and this is the message that I want to to send with it and this is why you should believe in me like as cringy as that sounds it was just me being as honest um as possible but then doing all that I could to make sure that it looked professional and that it had everything that all the other successful pages had and crowdfunding it's a long process I think it's an incredible way to do it and it's 
also amazing that these people are already interested in the film and they're, they're random strangers that you've never met but they believe yeah. in your project like that's yeah, such yeah. a that's such a privilege but it's time consuming like if you're gonna do it you have to do it well and it takes time and it's very tedious and it's all the small details is that time consuming in terms of setting setting it up and and monitoring the page or is it time consuming in terms of like is there a lot of admin that's related to it yeah, all of that. I mean, it takes a lot to set it up. And then it's also, you know, you kind of have to share about it every day on all the different platforms right, right. now and yeah. send it out to people. And yeah, it's it's very time consuming. So you just have to make sure that you've got the time to, to do it justice. So when it comes to your other projects, has that also been done through crowdfunding? There's various different ways that we've funded each of the projects. Um, yeah, some have been crowdfunding, some have been private investments, some have been investments from companies um or other people in the industry um and yeah we've worked a lot with lucas a ferrara who is a wonderful producer and who has supported creatives ever since covid he helps us to support these emerging creatives and, and you know we produce it with him for anybody who wants to learn more about you and broken flames productions uh, what are your socials where can they find you so my Instagram is at popseller. Um, I always feel like I have to explain that. It was I've had it since I was like twelve when I loved pop tarts. Um, <laughs> my company is at Broken Flames PD for Broken Flames Productions on Instagram and Twitter, and then my website's ellagreenwood.com and, and brokenflamesproductions.com. Great stuff. Well, thank you so much for this interview, and I really appreciate you being here on the podcast. Thanks so much. It's been lovely chatting with you.